everyone, Ranger Kendra here with this week's session of the Virtual Marine Science Lesson brought to you by the Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge. I'm coming to you again from the Islands and Ocean Visitor Center um, Science Learning Lab. And today I am super excited to tell you about one of my absolute favorite groups of animals um, that can be found here in Alaska Maritime Refuge. And so this group of animals is what we would call marine mammals. And so like other types of mammals, because there are mammals that can live on land, there are mammals that can live in water, marine mammals are like other, all other mammals. So they can breathe air, they are warm blooded, so their body is able to use energy to create warmth within them. Um, they give live birth and the mothers feed their young with milk. So just like mammals that are found on land, marine mammals have all of those same traits. However, the fact that they are marine means that their home is the ocean. And so um, they're specially adapted for living in ocean waters or the ocean home. Um, and so today I wanted to talk to you about some of the marine mammals that are actually found here in Alaska Maritime Refuge. Um, so we have a couple different groups and actually our refuge is home to thousands of marine mammals that either live here all year long in Alaska's oceans or they migrate here in the summer warmer months to either breed in large groups or large rookeries or to feed in our really nutrient rich waters. Um, and so again, today I wanted to share with you some of the different groups of marine mammals that live here in Alaska, either all or part of the year, and then share some fun facts about them and some of the species um, of them. And so our first group of marine mammals I wanted to share with you um, are the super cute sea otters. And so sea otters are some of the smallest of the marine mammals. They are part of the weasel family. Um, and they, again, they're some of the smallest of the marine mammals, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're small. So sea otters can get up to five feet long and be almost a hundred pounds. So they can get pretty big. Um, and they are a really cool marine mammal. Um, I have a, both a sea otter skull and pelt, so fur here. Um, and a couple fun facts about sea otters. So sea otters are bottom feeders. So they have bodies that especially are especially adapted to help them swim to the bottom of the ocean. Um, if you look at a sea otter, they have these great flippers on their back feet that allow them to swim and propel them through the water. Um, but they, if you look at their teeth, and so the cool thing about mammals in general is you can look at their teeth and in their skull and learn a lot about, about what they eat just by the shape of their teeth. And so sea otters um, have these really great flat molars. So they do a tremendous amount of chewing and grinding. They also have really sharp canines for cracking into their food as well. Um, they eat things like clams and sea urchins and crabs. They also are one of the only marine mammals that are tool users. So which means that they're using something that's not part of their body to help them accomplish something to keep that to help them survive. Uh, and so one great example is sea otters will collect rocks from the bottom of the ocean as well. And they have, if you look at their front paws, they have great pads for holding and gripping onto things. And they will use those rocks to help them crack into their food, such as clams. And so they are amazing tool users. And so again, sea otters are bottom feeders. They're picking up food off the bottom of the ocean. Um, and then here I have my sea otter pelt. So sea otters, they are a little different than most other marine mammals that live in cold Alaskan ocean waters because most marine mammals have an adaptation in their body called blubber, which is a thick layer of fat under their skin that helps to insulate them or keep them warm. Sea otters, however, do not have any blubber under their skin. And so they have to use another adaptation to help them stay warm. And that adaptation is their super thick fur. So sea otters have the thickest fur of any mammal on earth. And if you were to take your finger, which is about a square inch for the average finger and place it anywhere on that fur, you'd be touching about a million strands of hair. That's how thick it is. It's so thick that as those sea otters are playing in the water, water actually can't get down to their skin. So their skin stays nice and warm and dry. So a sea otter's fur is really important to them. Um, our next group of marine mammals I would like to share with you is this group called pinnipeds. And now pinnipeds 
are an amazing group of uh, marine mammals. They are, the word pinniped means flipper footed, which obviously they have flippers on their feet and the pinnipeds includes our seals and sea lions. Um, and so our, I have a few samples of seals and sea lions here with me. Uh, this here is a picture of a stellar sea lion. Stellar sea lions are pretty big animals. They can get up to almost 11 feet long and can get over 2,500 pounds. This big skeleton behind me is a skeleton from a stellar sea lion. I also have another example of a pinniped here with me as well. This little guy here, which is one of the smaller of the pinnipeds, this is the skull um, of a harbor seal. And this is also the fur of the harbor seal as well. And if you check out both the skull of my harbor seal, and if you can see it, the skull over here of my sea lion, you can notice that their teeth are super sharp. Because unlike our sea otter over here, who is swimming in the ocean and kind of slowly going down to the ocean bottom to pick up food, our pinnipeds are really fast swimmers because they are wanting to catch things like fish and squid in the water. So they're adapted to be extremely fast. They're like little torpedoes in the water and they're not doing too much chewing. They're really ripping and tearing those fish and swallowing it whole. And so their teeth look a lot different than our sea otters over here. Our next group, of marine mammals I'd like to share with you that are also found in Alaska. And these ones, you may be a little surprised that they're actually a marine mammal because there are other animals like them that are not considered marine mammals. And those are our polar bears. And so polar bears are a really amazing group of bears or species of bear um, that are considered marine mammals. And now Alaska has really three different types of bears. We have our polar bears, black bears, and brown bears. Now, however, polar bears, their primary food, so their resources come from the ocean. Their main food source are pinnipeds like our harbor seal or bearded seals here. And so polar bears, even though not all bears are considered marine mammals, polar bears are because they get their food from the ocean and they love to li live on the Arctic ice. And one amazing fact about polar bears, now these guys um, can get up to almost 900 pounds, so nine feet long. So they can get pretty big, especially the big males. Um, but polar bears have an amazing sense of smell. So this is a polar bear skull. And a polar bear has the ability to smell a seal from up to almost 20 miles away with its great sensitive nose. It can also, within less than a mile, smell a seal that is at least three feet under the Arctic ice. So they really use that nose to help them hunt for their food. The last group of marine mammals that I'd like to share with you today that can also be found here in Alaska's waters is my absolute favorite group of marine mammals, and these are our cetaceans. And so cetaceans, are made up of our whales, dolphins, and porpoises. And so two examples of cetaceans here. I have our ever popular orca, also known as a killer whale, and then humpback whales as well. And actually, if we could divide cetaceans in two separate groups, we have one group called the great whales, also known as the baleen whales. And these whales are the biggest animals on the planet. The biggest being the blue whale that can get almost to 100 feet long. And they use, these great whales use something in their mouth that is specially adapted for them to hunt. And so they have what we would call baleen inside their mouth. So if we looked inside the mouth of a great whale or baleen whale, you would see stuff similar to this. So this is baleen. And now inside of a big whale's mouth, the baleen would be nice and straight, but as it dries, it kind of twists like this. Uh, but this baleen is made out of keratin. So it's the same stuff that our fingernails are made out of, but it grows from there inside their mouth and it hangs down. It works just like a filter. And what happens, and you can see all these little hairs that are used to catch their food as they are hunting. 
a, this would be stacked in layers of hundreds and hundreds of layers through their mouth. And as they are hunting, these baleen whales would great, open their great big mouths, take in a huge mouthful of water, close their mouths, and then push that water out through the sides of their mouth. And all this baleen works just like a filter to hold on to things like zooplankton or small schools of fish that they're hunting. And so it makes it very easy for these great big animals to hunt for such small animals, to hunt for their prey. So this comes from a humpback. And then I also have this little baleen that works in the same way, but you'll notice it's a different color and it's much smaller. This is from a minke whale. The other types of cetaceans are like our orcas, these guys right here, and we call these ones toothed whales. So these would be more so our porpoises and dolphins. And just like their name suggests, they have teeth in their mouth. And I have a few examples of toothed whale teeth. The largest of all the toothed whales is this guy right here, which is called the sperm whale. And sperm whales are amazing whales because they can dive really, really deep. And they have the largest teeth of any animal on the planet. So this is a sperm whale tooth. And I can actually compare it to our orca tooth here. Um, orcas can get to be about 24 to 25 feet long. And so you can see the difference in these two teeth. But again, our tooth whales, just like their name suggests, hunt or have t teeth in their mouth unlike the baleen and our great whales. And they use a really amazing adaptation called echolocation to help them hunt for their food. So echolocation is really using sound vibrations to help them hunt. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my quick lesson on marine mammals that are found here in Alaska. Please join me next time for our Thursday virtual marine science lesson. I'll see you next time. Bye.